Invited my aunts and stuff to come over to our house to listen. Yeah, for, for us to put on the show. <laughs> so that's really how I started singing. And then I just kept singing and kept singing around the house until finally she said, You know what? I'm going to put you in the gospel group on the weekends so you can get out of the house singing. Yeah. So I joined the uh, Starlets of Corona, it's a gospel uh, choir. Mm -hmm. And we traveled all around the community. It wasn't just one church, yeah. which made it really nice and, and helped me develop loving to travel early. Yeah. We would go to Washington, D.C., we would go to Boston. Okay. Yes, and we would perform. And uh, my first song was a song called I Must Tell Jesus. Yeah. And um, when I sang the song the first time, I was so nervous that uh, I started crying. And the church went crazy because, you know, a little girl crying, singing I Must Tell Jesus. I became like the star of the choir. <laughs> and every time they wanted, they wanted me to like instantly have tears. It's like, oh God, I can't always have tears. But, you know, the nervousness in your stomach, you, you know. just brings it out. Yeah, so um, af after that, you know, the, the choir dismantled. And um, I went on to sing in local bands in New York City. You know, doing uh, talent shows, things like that in school. So, um, and I just went from band to band and, and just started working around the community. Yeah. And then it, it's taking you all over though, hasn't it? Yes, yes. I went to, when I graduated from um, high school, I graduated early, I was 16. And, and my first gig was six months after I graduated. Uh, I joined a group and we went to Canada for a year. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I was growing up, even though I was 16, my dad had to give me permission because I graduated from high school. So yeah. I toured Canada for a year. It was so really, how was that? It was, it was fun at first. <laughs> but I tell you, uh, when you're on the road with a lot of guys, guys just take their money and spend their money because they think it's always going. 
I opened up a bank account in Canada and was saving my money. And then like after about like eight months, you know, I mean, back then it was a lot, I had like $3,000. Yeah. And when the guys found out about it, they got mad because they had been spending their money you know what I'm saying? And then they were, yeah, and they was like, you know, well, we don't have no money, so what are we going to do? And it's like, I don't know, I have my bank account. You have a bank account? I was like, yeah. And it was like, how much do you have in your bank account? I thought they were my friends. They, they, you know, I'm cool with them. And I said, $3,000. And then they started asking me for money, so I left. <laughs> I called my dad, I was like, Dad, they asking me for my money. He said, come home, bring your money home. <laughs> yeah. Spirit for the proceeds. Yes. <laughs> what was your first release and what was the name of your first album? Okay, um, my first, first release uh, was a song called Body to Body. Uh, it was with a group called Shades of Love, and it was a studio session. And I didn't even know it was going to get released. And two weeks later, it was on the radio. Okay. Cause the uh, we, it was a background session, and the lead singer that was supposed to sing the song didn't show up, and they asked me what I do it, and I said yeah. And they paid me uh, back in those they paid me seventy five dollars to do it. Yeah, I thought I thought I was rich. Then, yeah. Cause you know we were doing fifty dollar sessions, so yeah. twenty five dollars, seventy five dollars more besides the fifty. That's one hundred twenty five dollars for the day. I was yeah. like, wow. But then two weeks later, it was on the radio, and like I want to say like a month later, it was the number one song in wow. New York. So uh, you know I went and. It was a group, it never was a group, you know, I was, you know, the only one that had sang with my friends and so a booking agent called me and said, I'm going to book you as the original singer mm. of Body to Body, so uh, that was my first uh, race. Yeah, and then I toured with Kashyyyk, because see, I was still a really good, you know, go-to background singer, so, you know, I did backgrounds for Melba Moore, I sang on Whitney Houston's first uh, CD, you know, because cause she produced two songs, so he called me on that. And um, then I toured with Kashif, and we, were, we actually were opening for Gladys Knight when Melba Moore's, listen to this, Melba Moore's husband, who was managing Kashif, told me to come into the office because they wanted to sign me. Really? Yes, isn't that something? So yeah. Melba Moore is really responsible for me having my first major record deal, wow. yeah, with her and her husband, Hush Productions. Yeah. So I went to the office that Monday and they literally signed me on the spot. Yeah. And that's how I got my deal with Capitol Records. Wow. Yeah, Melba helped me get that. <laughs> and uh, cause, so I call her Auntie Melba. I might as well call her Mama Melba, right? <laughs> but I call her Auntie Melba. But um, so that's when we recorded. Do Me Baby and Fool's Paradise and all those good things on the first album. Yeah. yeah. How did your family feel about your, your career choice? They always knew I was going to be a singer. Since that time in the living room, they knew. And yeah. your aunt's a singer as well. Yeah, yeah, they knew. <laughs> who or what has inspired you to write music? And who were your colleagues at the time? I used to, I liked Earth, Wind and Fire, Shaka Khan, people like that. And I used to always read the credits and I would always see that, you know, like Shaka Khan was helping to write all the Rufus, you know, Rufus with Shaka Khan songs and Earth, Wind and Fire wrote all their songs. And uh, so I just started, I'm not really a writer like that, like I can sit down and and write things. What I can do is, if you send me a, a track, what you call a track, mm -hmm. I can sit down and write things about what I've been going through in my life. Yeah. Yeah, I can write about life things. I don't really write about things that I don't know. Yeah. So, um, and in my writing, you know, first I was kind of rusty because I didn't, I have um, perfect pitch, but I didn't understand the relativity of the notes. Yeah. So I went to Juilliard School of Music to learn music theory, to understand why A goes with C and it doesn't go with B, yeah. you know, and all that stuff, because when you're writing, you have to understand that, you know, yeah, so it sounds great, yeah. Would you tell the Fire family the names of some of your hit songs? Oh, God. Well, do, give myself a line or two. Well, do Me Baby, 
Uh, Fool's Paradise. Do You Still Love Me? Love Changes. I did a duet with uh, Freddie Jackson called Back Together Again is popular. Body to Body is popular. Oh my goodness. I'm up for, um, we'll see, possible Grammy nomination uh, this year for the songs that I did on my last CD, Love Demands. And um, Never Love the Man, The Way That I Love You is on there. How Can You Mend a Broken Heart. Oh my goodness, I got the good love. Um, Oh, there's a lot of them. There it oh, is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's, a, there's a lot of them. Google me. <laughs> Why is music important? Because it touches the soul. Nothing touches the soul and relates to one person to another besides love and music. Yeah. Really. I, I don't know anything else that does that. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Your music has taken you around the world. Which countries have you performed in and which ones are memorable to you? I just recently did Japan, mm -hmm. uh, Billboard Live, four sold out shows. And I have not performed in Japan in 19 years. Wow. And I didn't even realize it because I'm, I'm working, you know, but I haven't, you know, it just flew. So Japan, I mean, they just, they were like, we miss you, we miss you, we miss you. And they were waiting for me at the hotel to sign their, they go get all the, all the CDs and they were waiting for me to sign them and everything. And it's great. So, um, London. <laughs> I love London. Yes. I like um, London because there's such appreciation for the music. You know, in, 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 um, in New York, you know, there's so much stuff that after a while, they just move on to the next thing. And, you know, if you're not hot right now. But for some reason, my music, especially Boots Paradise and Doobie Baby, you know, when people hear it, it takes them back to where they used to be and they love it. So I love the appreciation that London and York gives me for my music. Yeah, definitely. Please tell the Fire family about your collaborations and what's your favorite song. We go through well, uh, Kashif, uh, may he rest in peace, he, he really taught me a lot. He was a great producer, a great friend, and um, he gave great direction. He was really ahead of his time with the stuff that he did with Evelyn Champagne King and all that stuff. So he, he just really was a good person, so collaborating with him on Love Changes was nice. Um, let's see, it was Freddie Jackson. I enjoyed collaborating with him. I did something with Full Force and Isaac Hayes. Yeah, we did the song called Float On. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if, if you Google yeah. that, it, it's, it's on YouTube and stuff. And collaborate with him was really nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and also, you know, I didn't collaborate, but working with Whitney Houston, I mean, you, at the time we were just little giggly girls, you know, coming out with our CDs. And, you know, we didn't know no better. You know, we just uh, we didn't uh, had no idea that history was being made yeah. and that she wasn't going to be here yeah. that long. So, cause she should still be here. She should. Yeah. And so, working with her and being her friend was really special to me. Yeah. Would you mind sharing the current struggles you think a recording artist may face? Managing their money and making the right decisions uh, about this career because this career is like valleys, up, down, up, down. Do you think you're going to be up all the time? So, you know, everybody is not a Beyonce. <laughs> She's managed to stay up for a very, 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 very long time. Yeah, the Hattie LaBelle, she, she stays up, you know. Uh, you have to find your medium where to maintain and still enjoy your life because everybody gets into this music business and I want to be a I want to be a superstar, I want to be seen on TV, I want to be, ah, you know, and it, it steps, you know, and then they love you for a minute and then you fall down and then you build yourself back up. So you have to have the stamina and managing your money. Managing your money so that you have a nice life. You can't make, you can make a million dollars the first year and be here, you know, and then the next year you can make a hundred thousand and be here and then dollar lifestyle. So try to find your medium. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah.
What artist do you listen to? Oh my goodness. Um, I like Lettucey. Oh my goodness, her. I like her. I like Caesar. I listen to him. Um, the old school. I like the Supremes. You know, I have a song on my new um, CD, uh, Love Is Here and Now You're Gone by the Supreme. So I like them. I like the old school Al Green. And um, we listen to Drake because my be out younger than I. <laughs> He likes hip hop, you know. Yeah. So, and actually, he uh, rapped on uh, one of the songs that's up for a possible Grammy. Yeah, okay. he rapped on the song The Only One. So, uh, so we listened to a little new, a little old. Uh, and uh, let's see what we've been listening to a lot lately Bruce Springsteen. Listening to Bruce Springsteen. If we just dance in the dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Surprised by the response the UK's artists did you? Yeah, I, I mean, the first time um, I came here and did Foolish Paradise, I was really, really, really uh, surprised. And it's not seen the same in America. No, believe it or not, it is the same in America. Um, it, it, I tell people that it really is it's huge in America. I didn't even know it was a hit song. I was out touring with Billy Ocean. And um, uh, I came back to New York and we were doing Radio City, which holds like 5,000 people. And my girlfriend came up to me, you know, my BFF, Darlene, and she says, I can't wait until you sing Fool's Paradise at Radio City. And I said, I, that song is not in the show. She said, what? And, and she said, you kidding me? I said, that's a B song. I'm not doing that song. I do like Doobie Baby and yeah. that kind of. She says, "Girl, it's a hit in 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 New York. You have to do that song." Yeah. And she says, "Oh, please, Willie, really, so do the song." So I actually went back, had rehearsal with the band, and learned the song. Okay. And so then we do Radio City, you know, open it for Billy Ocean, and do 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 do, and five thousand people jump out of their seats, and I go. Oh my God, and my girlfriend's like in a front she says, yeah, I told you, it's a hit. <laughs> She's like this, yeah, 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 that's my girl, that's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> So, Ali, yeah. So it, you know, when I I didn't know it was as, that big over here. So when I get the response, it is just lovely. But what I usually like to do is, cause people get in such a frenzy, I like to go down in the audience and, and dance with them and stuff, so so they can touch. But, oh, she's here. <sighs> Let me calm down. Yeah. <laughs> that whole lot of soul. Yes. <laughs> you did very well maintaining your soul. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Because they get so excited, oh, I'm going to take a picture, oh, you know, they can calm down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, in front of you, take a dance, yeah. take I'm used to it. <laughs> Please feel free to make a shout out to any of your well wishes. Oh, God, well wishes to my BFF, Darlene, because she had an asthma attack before um, I left, so I want her to be well. Um, well to her. Yeah. Uh, Darlene Scott, yes. Well, she's to Darlene. Yeah, she because she was we was trying to get her over here, but she had an asthma attack, and she hasn't had one in like five years, so she always smoke or something, yeah. and it really got so. So get well, babe. That's my baby, and my other baby, my baby, baby, little, little, little baby, Sebastian Thomas, my fiance. Yeah. So. <laughs> He says, he says, get home because he's eaten all the chicken, he's yeah. eaten all the steak, he's eaten all the salmon. Good and job. so now, <laughs> now to cans of tuna. <laughs> so he's like, come home, come home, I've got tuna. <laughs> I love you, babe. <laughs> what have you currently got in the pipeline? Um, we're just praying, hopefully, for the nomination. But even if I don't get one, we're still going to the Grammys. Um, because of it, everyone's been calling, so we're probably going to do a city winery run. Um, oh, shout out to the promoter, Orlando. 
you yes. know, for having me here. And I'm looking forward to the Giants Lovers she Rock. Oh my goodness, yeah. and, and I'm singing with Vivian Jones. The original, mm -hmm. yeah. Can you believe that 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 sang with uh, Deborah Glasgow? So, yeah. I cut, you know, and may she rest in peace, you know, yeah. uh, because they told me to learn um, Champion Lover and uh, Night Shining Armor. And they said, oh, and, and the first, and the first. So I'm thinking, oh, I might not do the first, so I'm just gonna learn these two. And then when I get to rehearsal. Thank God I had just listened to the song because Vivian Jones was there and he's like, I'm going to sing with her. I was like, oh my God, let me go back in the van and listen to you. You're nursing it. Sounds lovely. Yeah, so, uh, and he's very meticulous. Oh, just, you know, do your thing, but get that, get that melody, get that melody, you know, and then you branch out to do your thing. You know? lovely, <laughs> oh God, so we took pictures. I'm going to post it, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> How can the Fire family keep in contact with you? So, uh, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Melissa, not Melissa, Melissa, so it's M-E-L-I-S-A-M-O-R-G-A-N, and if you put in one L and one S, like I'm telling you, M-E-L-I-S-A-M-O-R-G-A-N, my picture will pop up everywhere. If you put in M-E-L-I-S-S-A, you won't find me. <laughs> so uh, it's Melissa Morgan. Uh, one. I have Melissa Morgan fan page. I have Melissa Morgan. Uh, is it one or something on on Instagram and Melissa Morgan twenty two on Twitter? Okay, so you can find me. Message me, okay? Say hi. <laughs> hi. Oh look, hey, we got man. Uh, your friend. Hi. <laughs> oh, that's really good. You gotta get them. <laughs> Thank you. Fire red station is hard. <laughs> so you're looking forward to the Giants of Lovers Rock. The, yes. The mix of soul coming together with Lovers Rock. How are you feeling about that? Well, um, I'm really excited because this is my first time singing reggae. Mm. Yeah, and um, uh, I just recently did something with the, oh, what's the guy, Boom Basic, what's his name? Shaggy. Shaggy, yes, did we you? did, yes, we did an award show together, and they gave me an award in Brooklyn, New York, and he was the host. Wow. Yes, it was, it was wonderful, so I took pictures with him. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. A new experience. I haven't sang reggae, but I like it. Yeah. I like it. So you I never saw know. You pop into it. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it might be something in, in the near future. Me and Orlando was talking. You never know. Yeah. It might make something happen. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm um, working with Melba and Jean Kahn and, and Shirley Jones, just wonderful, talented artists, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to working with them and hearing the um, the reggae artists. Yeah. Over here, yeah, yeah, They're really nice. So uh, we're gonna be there all night, I'm sure. I'm gonna be going to see Glenn Jones tonight. Yeah, oh, Glenn Jones. Glenn Jones is like my brother. Yeah, um, I just did his unsung mm -hmm. in um, New York, the TV show. I was a, a guest on there talking about him, and me and his uh, uh, wife are, are really good friends, uh, Genovia Jeta Jones, and uh, I wrote her first hit song because she's a gospel singer and she wanted me to write a song for her because you know she liked the way I write and I wrote the song You Can Have All of My Love which is a gospel song and it was a hit song for her. Okay. Yeah and the say she did like Soul Train and all kind of stuff and it did very well on the charts so they're like family to me. Okay. So. Um, yes, I'm going to go see Glenn Jones again, because <laughs> I've seen him so many times, but never seen him in London. So I know he's going to have a great show. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing you on stage on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday, okay. yes. Giants Lovers Rock. Okay. Come on and do me, baby, at Fire Red Station. Whoa.